<laughs> All right, it's time to start. It's good to see everybody here this morning. If you would, I'd ask you to please stand with me. And uh, we'll open up in a word of prayer. Brother Howard Payne, if you would, open us up in a word of prayer, brother. Amen. All right, grab you a church hymnal, turn to page 139, page 139. Let's do that at Calvary. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified. trembled at the law I'd spurned till my guilty soul in glory turned to Calvary and mercy there was great in grace it was free pardon there was multiplied to me and there my burden soul found liberty at given to Jesus everything and now I gladly own him as my king and now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary sing it now and mercy there was great and grace was free pardon there was multiplied to me and there my birth Oh, family. Page 176, page 176, an old account was settled long ago. There was a time on earth when in the book of death an old account was standing for sins yet un. My name was at the top and many things below. I went unto the keeper and said, Oh, long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. And the record's clear today, for he washed 
my sins away When the old account was settled long ago The old account was large and growing every day For I was always sinning and never tried to pay But when I looked ahead and saw such pain and woe I said that I would settle and settled long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. And the record's clear today, for he washed my sins away. When the old account was settled long ago. When at the judgment bar, I stand and he the book will open he cannot find a thing then will my heart be glad while tears of joy will flow because i had it settled and settled long ago long ago long ago yes the old account was settled long ago and the records Long ago, oh sinner, sing the Lord, repent of all your sins, for thus he has commanded, if you would enter in, and then if you should live a hundred years below, and here you'll not regret it, you settled long ago, long ago. Good to see you this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer again. Ask the Lord to help us in the service. We certainly need his help. As Brother Howard said, ask him to touch everybody's heart that comes today, that God will speak to us through his word, through the singing, through the moving of the Spirit of God, through the hearts of his people. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Kobe, lift your voice and ask the Lord to help us. I just pray, Lord, for this service. Lord, I pray your name would be high and lifted up, and I pray that everything done would bring honor and glory to you. Lord, I pray for that one that's lost this morning, Lord, that doesn't know you in the free pardon of sin. God, I pray, Lord, that you'd speak to that heart. Lord, there may be some, God, that's drifted afar off. Lord, help us to get closer to you. God, help us all to lay aside that weight, Lord, that the, and the sin that does so easily beset us. And help us to run with patience the race that's set before us. Lord, I just pray now that you touch preacher as he preaches. I pray for the singing, and I pray everything done we bring honor and glory to your name. Please go with us now in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I say a word of welcome to you. Appreciate you being here this morning. Let me make just a few announcements. It's good to be back. We enjoyed a, a good time, a vacation away with a fa our family. And Caught a breath, but Howard asked me if I was all rested up. Well, I don't know if that's the case, but I'm more rested than I was when I left. But uh, we are, I'm grateful to be back home this morning. Appreciate Brother Matt, Brother Chris, and Brother Avery filling, out, filling in for me. Brother Howard moderated on Wednesday night, and I appreciate that greatly. And uh, But I'm glad to be back. Let me just make a few announcements about the day. Uh, we'll have prayer room tonight at 545, and then in the evening service, we'll be having a baptism after the end of the service. And uh, so I encourage you to be back tonight. Man, we've got several preachers. Brother Adams preaching this morning, Brother Chris is preaching this morning. Brother Mark's preaching this morning. Brother Randall's supposed to be preaching this morning, but he texted me as he was sick, asked us to pray for him. So let's let's ask the Lord to help him. And then uh, we others are traveling. We have two of our young ladies go down to Pensacola and walk with the graduation graduation ceremonies at Pensacola yesterday. So I mean, we've got a host of folks traveling and preaching and serving the Lord. And and uh, so you pray God will give us a good day. And pray God will give them safe travels as they come back. But um, 
Don't forget, uh, again, tonight after the service, we'll baptize them Tuesday night, men's prayer at 730, and then Wednesday night, I want a 630 for supper, and then prayer meeting at 730. Now, next Sunday will be the fifth Sunday, and on the evening service, we're going to be having a special graduation ceremony. We started this back in COVID because most all the kids, none of the kids were getting to, at that point, have a graduation service whether it was a homeschool service or a public school service. We just decided that we would have our own, and, man, it just went so well. We have continued to do that, and we're going to continue to do that. And and uh, so we're the next Sunday night, we'll be having a graduation ceremony here, and the graduates, we've got seven graduates, a large graduating class, and uh, they'll be uh, dressing in, in their uh, graduation attire, and uh, I'll be preaching a charge to them during the service, and then we'll go out in the in the sanctuary or in the uh, fellowship hall and have a time of refreshments, and they'll have a little table set up with their their uh, graduation, uh, just their different pictures and things of that nature. The church done a little banner for them out in the front, if you've seen those, and also on the new sign and then on social media as well. So we'll have an opportunity. They've got a listing of them in the bulletin if you want to bring them a little graduation gift. The, all the kids are listed uh, there in the bottom of your bulletin. And I think Brother Matt may have mentioned these last week, uh, but we've got we've got some new tracks that we've got out got out out uh, in the fellowship or not the fellowship but the vestibule, and uh, pretty easy to handle. A lot of times, sometimes we don't want to carry a track because it's big and large and you can't put them anywhere. But these are business size tracks. You put them in the door of your vehicle, put them in your pocket, and uh, man, there's one for do one right there if you leave a tip somewhere. And we've got them from everything from. Uh, Christmas, to we got one coming for the Fourth of July that'll have an American flag on it, and we got some that are going to be uh, uh, that'll be sort of tailored to the time of year we're in, whether it's Easter or whether it's uh, whether it's uh, Valentine's Day or the Fourth of July or the fall or Christmas or whatever Easter, whatever it might be. And I encourage you now, and I just say, moms and dads, if you'll help me now. In the past, we've let the kids take as many as many of the little chick tracks because we know they read those. But uh, moms and dads, you'll help me. Just uh, and I don't care if they get one to read them and things like that. But just don't let them reach in there and get the whole thing and take them home, use them for trading cards. But um, you know if they're <laughs> if they're lost. They need to play. They want to play with them and read the Bible on the back of them. That'd be all right. But but uh, I encourage you to get some of these. And and it's you know what a lot of times we're afraid. One of the reasons we want we want witnesses were because we're afraid of rejection. And all you got to do, man, this one here, this one, thank you for your service. Put that down on the table with your tip. Lay it beside the money. They're going to pick it up. And most of these are bright enough and colorful enough. They're going to pick it up and look at it. And there's a couple of verses and a quick message. It's not where they got to sit down and read for 30 minutes to get to the point. It's going to be a pretty quick hitter. And I encourage you. You can give one of the drive throughs Say, can I give you something when they give you a change? Can I give you something? Invite you to church. And I encourage you to do that. I think it'll be a blessing. And these are much easier to carry. You can put them in your pocket. You can put them in, you get you one of them little business card holes like we used to carry when I worked in the bank and you can just give one out. So I encourage you to get them. There's one for a lot of different a lot of different applications and I encourage you to get them. And um, and you ain't got to preach a message, but you can be a witness by putting the word of God in their hand and a track in their hand and and these are I get I, honestly they're colorful and uh, will will I think it will uh, peak their attention, and man, in about 10 seconds, they can read read what the Word of God has to say about some verses about salvation, and I encourage you to get a hold of those. Man, Bible school starts two weeks from tonight, and uh, we're excited about that. For the We have them all the way from the nursery kids all the way up to our adults. Brother Levi, I'll be teaching the adult class at night, and I encourage all you adults to come. It'll be a blessing, and we're going to have a good time, and uh, we're going to do, I think the theme is Mighty God this time, and uh, we'll be working around that. So, a lot of going on, a lot going on. I told Brother David, camp is in five weeks from today, uh, six weeks from today. It actually starts six weeks from today. So a lot of work to be done. Fellas, somewhere in July, we're going to probably have to go over there on a Saturday and see if these beds still go together. I hope they do. And uh, But, man, they've been sitting there for two years, and we've not been able to use them. So there's probably going to be some work we're going to have to do in the coming days. But, uh, man, let's begin to pray that God will help us and meet our needs financially, meet our needs spiritually. I think the last, the last, last time we had camp, which would have been in the summer of 19, I think the two weeks of camp, the trips and everything, and a lot, most of it's paid for by our, our – by our um, registration fees and things like that, but I think we spent around one hundred and ten thousand dollars, somewhere between one hundred and ten and one hundred twenty thousand dollars, 
in those two weeks. And with the way inflation and prices are right now, you can matter right. That's going to be thirty percent more. And uh, so we need to pray God to help us meet their needs, send the kids in, and, uh, and but then I ask God to touch their heart. The Lord always takes care of the money and all that kind of stuff. But man, if we go through all that trouble and the Lord doesn't come meet with us and help us, we can't do it on our own ability and talents. We've got to have his power, his strength, and his help to change the lives of these young people, and that's what we're looking for. Let me ask you to pray for Brother Jim. Brother Jim had to have a, a, a very emergent procedure yesterday. Um, he had a twisted cold, and he, Jim's not been feeling well for about three months and uh, he had to have a, a colon procedure yesterday where they had to take out a good portion of his colon and uh, Miss Marsh has asked us to pray for him spoke with him two or th- her two or three times yesterday and I'm going right after church to see him so let's continue to pray for Brother Jim that the Lord would help him and uh, continue to pray for Miss Pat it's good to see Brother Bob Miss Winnie here and uh, I miss Brother Ron this morning and Miss Jenny Brady still battling battling her cancer so we need to continue to pray for her as well that God will help them and Miss Miss Byers and uh, Brother Wayne and Miss Bobby Gale Byers, pray for them as well. All right, I know that's a lot of announcements. I had a lot to catch up on, but uh, let's do what let's what we'll do. Let's stand our feet, and you bring your tithes and offerings to the front, and everybody that sings in the adult choir, ever thought about singing in the adult choir, ever dreamed about singing in the adult choir, we need your help this morning, all right? You come on. Miss Ju- and Miss, I appreciate Miss Chrissy helping us out. Miss Julianne's traveling, and, uh, and she's helping us out this morning. We're grateful for it. So let's stand. You bring your offering. Amen. Also, while they're coming, let me say to all our folks, Next Sunday for next Sunday night's reception, there's a sign-up sheet in the fo- in the foyer for you to help us bring some of the snacks and refreshments for next Sunday night. So make sure you sign up for something to bring next Sunday night. All right. Announcement for our family. Uh, this last Wednesday, after much stress for about four days we we went to florida and had elena with us and we were trying our best not to spill the beans what was going to happen wednesday night but on wednesday night riley proposed to elena and by the grace of god she said yes amen and uh, so we congratulate them on their engagement and somebody asked us how was vacation i said after we got that done we could catch our breath i said because we were all afraid we were going to say something and number one, me. The other night, I was using an illustration, and I hope Elena didn't see this because my brother Dave had to take it down. I was using an illustration about Riley and, and making a purchase and how God provided some things that he wouldn't, that he wasn't, uh, per, you know, thinking about. And and man, we got in the car, and Miss Amy said, "What in the world were you thinking?" I said, well, I didn't say anything. She said, everybody in that place knew what you were thinking about. You're going to have to call Brother Dave and tell him to take that off of Facebook. I thought, good, night in the morning. Here I was being careful, but, man, we made it. And I think she got surprised, and we're tickled. She's going to be a part of our family, and Riley's going to be a part of the Hamby family as well. So congratulations to them. Going to be a lot of broke daddies around here. Amen. Amen. Amen, Brother Pat. <laughs> Brother Sean has showed us the way. Amen. <laughs> Amen.
while you turn your Bible to John chapter 11, let me say again, thank you to Miss Chrissy. I, I know you folks that uh, play an instrument. You realize that uh, that is a, a difficult task when you don't play for the choir every week to, and all the nuances of, of the songs that we do and all that, that uh, that is a, that's not an easy role to step in and did. She did a great job this morning. And uh, we were very thankful for her stepping in and helping us this morning. And, uh, and uh, especially when you have me and Brother Jacob to, to, to contend with, I mean, because I might walk, Miss Julianne, one, I remember walking over there one Sunday, I said, Miss Julianne, could you sing this song? She looked at me with all respect. She said, Preacher, do you think I know every song that you, that you do? And I said, Miss Julianne, I think you know it and can sing it. <laughs> she just smiled and she said, well, I'll do my best. And, and I mean, I give you about 35 seconds notice. It's a lot of notice when you do stuff like that. And uh, I walked over there before church. I said, Brother Jacob, I said, walk over here with me. And I walked over there to Miss Christie. I said, Miss Christie, I'm trying to think of that song you used to sing with your sisters about 20 years ago. You think you might sing it? She said, uh, uh, I said, I'm just messing with you. Amen. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to loosen her up a little bit, Brother Jacob, make her feel comfortable. But we, I am very thankful. And I promise you that, and, and that is a, that it's not an easy task to do. And I really appreciate her feeling this morning. It's good to be home. I'm excited to be back in the pulpit this morning. John chapter number 11. And uh, I didn't get to tell you, but on that Wednesday night of our meeting in Alabama, we had two teenage young ladies get saved right before we left to go on vacation. I'm praising God for that. Two young ladies got saved and I'm thankful to the Lord for it. I'm glad God's still saving sinners. Amen. And I bless the Lord for it. John chapter 11, let's stand together. It's good to have Brother Jacob's sister and her, his brother-in-law with us, Miss Amber, her husband with us this morning, and we're thankful they're here and praise God for it. And other, but good to have Brother Jan, Miss Jan and Brother Mike's nephew with us, and we're thankful he's here as well. The Bible said, now a certain man, verse number one, was sick. Named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. That, that verse right there sort of knocks a lot of charismatic doctrine out that if you'll just get right with God and be saved and live, live right, you ain't never going to have any trouble. That, that, sort of, that verse right there that sort of knocks that in the head, amen. He said, man, this sickness was to the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, which he had heard therefore that he, when he had heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, <coughs> saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples saying to him, Master, the Jews of late salt and stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If any man walk in the day, stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, or let's go back, let's go back to verse 12. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had laid in the grave, laid in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off, and many of the Jews came to Mary and Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. You can be seated. Keep your Bible open. We're going to look through these texts this morning. But as you walk into John chapter 11, we realize that we have walked in to a town called Bethany. When the Son of God arrived in Bethany, what he found was that, that it seemed like that he had walked in to a hopeless situation. The Bible said that Lazarus was dead. 
I May mean, I say from the human perspective uh, that situation that the Son of God has found himself in in these verses, uh, the story in John chapter 11, it looked to the human perspective, it looked like that this was an impossible situation. Lazarus was dead, the family was depressed, and the rest of the people there were doubtful that the Lord could do anything about the situation. I remember in Mark chapter 7 of the four men that were concerned and Jesus was preaching in the house and the four men, they bore uh, the man of palsy on their shoulders and brought him to the Son of God. And uh, there were so many there in the meeting that I had to get up on the roof and tear the roof off and uh, let the man of palsy down into the house. And the Bible said this, when the Lord saw their faith, uh, he said unto the sick of the palsy, a son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And Boy, the scribes were standing around there and they heard uh, uh, what the Son of God said. Uh, uh, they heard him say, Son, thy sins uh, uh, be forgiven thee. And before they realized it, the Bible said uh, uh, that the scribes reasoned with theirself uh, and they made this statement. They said, Who can forgive sins uh, except but God only? And can I tell you, they didn't even realize what they had said. Uh, and matter of fact, what they had said was really an, an, uh, an indictment to the Lord that he was claiming to be the son of God or he was claiming to be the God of heaven and they didn't believe that he was who he said he was but they had no idea that they really were as right as rain amen that they said who can forgive sins but God only and can I tell you they made that statement in haste and they made that statement really as an indictment to the Lord but they were really starting to figure out that what he was saying or who he was saying who he was and can I tell you what those scribes realized uh, was there was some things that only God uh, can do uh, and can I tell you when you're a child of God you live for him uh, and you walk with him and you read about him and you get to know him uh, uh, through the pages of this Bible uh, uh, you're going to find that there's situations uh, uh, that only God uh, can do anything about uh, I'm afraid the day in which we live uh, uh, the last person we go to in a lot of sense uh, uh, is the Lord we put it on social media pray for this uh, or maybe we'll talk to somebody who's affluent or, or if we got a need or somebody that we got confidence in uh, and uh, we'll go to them and ask counsel or we'll uh, go to them and ask us to ask them to pray uh, and the last person that we go to uh, is the only one who has the power uh, and the authority to affect the situation uh, and can I tell you as a pastor, as a father, as a Christian, uh, as a son, as a friend uh, I have found myself in situations uh, uh, that the one the only one I knew that could do anything about it uh, uh, was the God of heaven uh, and can I tell you and I will, you and I uh, uh, will arrive at the same conclusion uh, uh, that those boys did those scribes did uh, in uh, Mark chapter number 7 uh, uh, that there's just some things that only God can do uh, and can I believe when you walk into John chapter 11 uh, uh, we already realize that it's in these events Lazarus is dead uh, uh, Mary and Martha were heartbroken uh, the crowd around them were doubting that God had the ability uh, uh, to do what he said he would do uh, uh, but can I tell you they came to the same conclusion uh, uh, that there are only some things uh, uh, that God uh, can do uh, I've, I've talked to a lot of cu uh, couples through the years they come in uh, and struggling in their marriage and, and boy first thing you know want to say well he needs to do this uh, and the next thing she'll say well he needs to do that uh, and before they know it they're trying to fix one another uh, and you can ask me Sammy, I tell them, listen, uh, you can't fix each other. You don't have the power to change uh, another individual. I said, the only one that you can change uh, is who you are, uh, and you're going to have to leave the other one, whether it be your husband, uh, or whether it be a child, you're going to have to leave them in the hands of God uh, because he's the only one that's got the power uh, uh, to transform uh, their life. Uh, uh, but can I tell you, when you look into these verses, what you find uh, is there's just some things that only God can do. If the Lord help me uh, for just a little while I want to preach on that's just God uh, uh, doing uh, what he does amen uh, how many times in your Christian life since you've been saved uh, uh, that boy you looked at a situation and said there's no way uh, uh, God's not going to be able to do anything with this it's not going to turn out uh, it's not going to turn out the way we think it ought to uh, and before you know it you're standing there in amazement uh, uh, with your mouth draping open uh, uh, thinking my goodness how in the world uh, and you'll think man that just had to be God uh, that's just God doing what he does and let's look in the word of God and see what he does 
I want you to notice what is what the Lord's doing. See, only God can give life to the dead. Only God can give life to the dead. Look at verse number 14. The Lord, I like what the, what the Word of God said, Brother Howard. He said, then Jesus said unto them plainly. He said, just in case you're confused, just in case you're still in doubt of what I'm saying, Lazarus is dead. He is graveyard dead. Amen. Now listen, we don't listen. Lazarus got sick and he died. We don't know what caused Lazarus to get sick, and we don't know what caused Lazarus to die. Oh, but can I tell you, it doesn't matter what was right in Lazarus' life. It doesn't matter what characteristics that Lazarus had in his life that were right. Oh, because there was one thing wrong with Lazarus oh, that trumped everything that was right. You say, what is it? He was dead. Amen. And can I tell you, listen, we're living in a day uh, people want to tell us what's right with them, uh, how good they're doing, but the problem is uh, it doesn't matter how handsome you are. Uh, it doesn't matter how intelligent you are. Uh, it doesn't matter how gifted you are. Uh, it doesn't matter how wealthy you are. Uh, it doesn't matter how charismatic you are. Uh, it doesn't matter how, uh, uh, how well you're received in the community uh, or at the job. It doesn't matter how smart uh, you may think you are. Uh, can I I tell you, if you are dead, uh, you being dead trumps your intelligence. Uh, it trumps your looks. Uh, it trumps your ability. Uh, it trumps everything about you. Uh, uh, Lazarus was dead. He was dead. And can I just say it real quickly? As Jesus said to the disciples, let me say it plainly. If you're dead, you're dead. Amen? I mean, man, we, we live in a day. Brother Howard, where people go around one dead person comparing themselves to another dead person. Well, I'm better than so and so. Man, I, you know, I social drink, but I'm not a drunk. You're still dead. Amen. Well, I'm not a narcissist, but I've lied. Well, you're dead. Amen. I listen, that whatever you passed on your road last week where somebody ran over it, it was as dead in the first five seconds that the breath departed out of its body than it was five days later when it was swollen up, uh, swollen up uh, like a beach ball. It was no more dead. It was just a little bit more decayed. Amen. Uh, I'm telling you, Jesus raised three. I know from the dead. He raised that Jairus' daughter had only been dead for just a few moments. And then he raised that widow named son. He had been dead long enough to be buried. And now he's about to raise Lazarus who had been dead four days. Uh, uh, can I tell you, I don't care if it was four seconds or four days uh, or listen, whatever it might have been, uh, uh, dead is dead, amen. Uh, uh, Brother Kobe said this morning, preaching in the jail, uh, one of them boys hollered off the top, hey, I don't need a Bible. Hey, I don't need a Bible. Hey, I don't need the Bible. And Brother Kobe said, that's what I thought. Uh, he said, that's what I thought years ago uh, uh, before I got saved. Let me tell you something, friend. Uh, uh, you may be sitting on a church pew uh, or you may be sitting in a jail cell. Uh, you may be sitting in an executive office uh, or sitting under the rails like I saw in Philadelphia back in March uh, uh, with them shooting dope in the middle of the day. Uh, uh, you may be, listen, uh, uh, you may be an educated person uh, or a wealthy person. Uh, uh, you may live in a grand house or a trailer. Uh, uh, but friend, listen, it doesn't matter where you live, uh, what you do. Uh, if you don't know Christ, you're dead. Amen. I don't care if it's one of these six, seven, eight-year-old children that God has woken their, uh, their conscience up to their sin or if it's, the, if it's the drunkest man in the county, they're both dead. Amen. They're both dead. We need to get this through our mind. Dead is dead. Ephesians 2, 1. Amen. Dead. See, last night, Brother Ron and Miss Aaron, they got home, and they got home to a pig in their yard. You can put lipstick on a pig. You can put dress on a pig. You can put shoes on a pig. You can give a pig a bath. You can dip it in cologne. But at the end of the day, you still got a pig. Amen, amen, and amen. 
And can I tell you, that's where we get confused. Uh, people, that, well, the reason folk don't get saved, they don't realize their sin's as bad as they think it is. They're not dead. They think, man, I'm okay. I'm in church. I, I'm in a good family. I'm in this. I'm in that. Uh, but when they ever realize they're dead and they need Christ, uh, friend, when you're dead, you realize they've but one person that can give you life, and that's Christ. Look at your Bible. Look at verse 3. I'm talking about only God can give life to the dead. Notice how he cared for Lazarus. The Bible said that the girl said to him, Lord, he whom thou lovest is sick. We ought to take time out and shout right there, amen. Hey, that the God of heaven, the one that created everything out of nothing, uh, loves you and I. Brother Danny, what a blessing. Uh, uh, Jesus loves me, this I know. Uh, uh, for the Bible tells, what about the God of heaven? Uh, I mean, man, that was taking account. Uh, he was taking time to care uh, about little lowly Lazarus. Can I tell you, the Bible said, uh, uh, Jesus heard, uh, and Jesus saw, and Jesus loved, uh, and Jesus cried. We see in that, uh, uh, that he was the son of man uh, but thank God when he cared uh, he was not only the son of man he was the son of God uh, and the son of man part that made him care uh, uh, caused the son of God part to put the life back in him uh, I'm glad thank God uh, he was the son of man that identified himself with sinners uh, uh, but he was the son of God uh, uh, that came and lived a sinless life uh, and shed his blood on Calvary and breathed life into our life amen Amen. Hebrews 4 said he's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He knows what we face. He knows what we fight. And he knows what we feel. Amen. What a God. Not only did he care for Lazarus, but he came to him. Amen. Hey, what did he say? He said in verse number 14, nevertheless, let us go unto him. I'm glad not only did he care for him, Brother Roger, I would, I would say even after all these years of being saved, you remember the moment that he came to you. You remember the moment that it wasn't a God off in the distance or some deity out in the middle of nowhere, but it was the God of heaven in the person of the Holy Ghost uh, that came to where you are, Squire Parsons, if you ever got it right. He got it right when he penned the words, he came to me. When I could not come to where you were, uh, he came to me. What about it, Brother Howard? Uh, he came to us. Not only did he care, uh, uh, but he cared enough to come. Amen. Uh, the, listen, the Lord could have healed him from where he was. Uh, he didn't even have to come, but he did. Uh, aren't you glad for the hour, Brother Travis? Uh, uh, Brother Jacob went down there in South George, the little boy, uh, on that Wednesday night. Uh, he didn't say it's Wednesday night. I'm not going to save any children. Uh, he didn't say he wasn't old enough to get in. Uh, he didn't say he doesn't belong to an affluent family. Uh, he's not the pastor's child. Uh, he's not the deacon's child. Uh, uh, no, he came to where you were. Uh, I'm glad this morning if you're lost, uh, he'll come to where you are uh, and he'll draw you to himself uh, because he's the only one uh, that can give life to a dead man. Amen. Amen. I, I, hear, I, I can hear Brother David testifying in my, in my mind. He'd take you back and he'd say, I came in the old building. He'd say, I play him right here, 16 year old boy. Sunday morning, Brother Guy was a preaching. He said, I came to that race. He said, I knelt right here. Brother David would testify the only reason he came here was because he went there, amen. And the only reason you bowed to him, or the only reason you went to an altar, or the only reason you got down by a bed, or the only reason you called out to God was the Holy Ghost of God, or the blessed light of heaven shined into your heart and he cared for you and he came to you, amen. He came and he, and he cared. Look at your Bible. But then he called for Lazarus. He cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. You remember Brother Darren, that night God saved you while he was making that big call to others. He made it personal to you. Amen. He spoke your name, amen. Hey, he could be saving a hundred others in the same service, 
But when, you, when he gets to talking to you, you feel like you're the only one in the world. He's got a spotlight drawn on you. Aren't you glad for the fact that he called you? Amen. But now, he did one other thing. In verse 44, he cut him, they cut him free. What did he say to him? Loose him and let him go. Is that what he said? Now I believe with all my heart, Brother Jacob, the Lord was teaching a lesson right here. Because if he was, about, if he was able, Brother Chris, to bring him back from the dead, do you think he really had a problem getting him out of the grave clothes? If he could bring him out of hell or bring him out of death, excuse me, you think he really had difficulty getting him out of them clothes? He could have, if he spoke life into him, he could speak him clothes off of him. But I believe with all my heart, Brother Howard, he's trying to drive a point home in the fact that he came out of there. He was, if he was, had to be loosed, what was wrong with him? He was bound. I wonder how many Christians are living where Lazarus was. Hey, mark her down. He was alive in them grave clothes. Everybody okay? He, did, he, he was alive. He was coming out. He was bound. Anybody have an idea of maybe what I'm thinking here? How many of us have got saved? But the life that we're trying to live in our Christian life is where Lazarus was. We're bound by the old life. You see, what were those grave clothes? They were relics of the old life. They smelled like the old life. They bound him like the old life. And what did the Lord say? He said, loose him and let him go. Amen. I, I'm telling you what, I'm glad for some people in my life as a young Christian. I, I mean, I came out and boy, God had breathed life into me. And there was some still of that old life hanging on me. Uh, but there was some of that stench of the graveyard still on me. Uh, but there was still some grave clothes on me. Uh, uh, but some saints of God loved me and some preachers. Uh, preached the word of God to me uh, and that preaching and that love cut them rags uh, of that all I can I tell you you may be alive uh, or you may no longer be in the grave uh, uh, but you may be jumping around hopping around because you're bound uh, uh, by the old life I'm telling you uh, of the same God that set you free uh, uh, from death can bring you out of the grave uh, and set you free from the bondage of your old life yeah. amen that's right, the divided boys. He was alive in them grave clothes. And I wonder how many folks that I preach to on a weekly basis here and other places are in the same place. You're alive. You're going to heaven. Your name's recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. You're not lost. I'm not trying to tell you you're lost. But you're bound You've not cut some things off of you that need to be cut off. Mom and Dad, it gets real serious with some of those things that are in your life, those old life is binding you. But when they start binding your children, it gets real important then. Amen? Hello? He's the only one that can give life to a dead man. That's just God doing what he does. Number two, there's only God that can give joy to the depressed. Do you realize the two times that despair and depression a lot of times attract, attack Christians? You know what it is? After a great success or a great loss. You say, can you give me a Bible example? You better believe I can. Elijah, four verses after killing 450 prophets of Baal. Four verses. I mean, a less than a half a chapter away from praying 63 words, calling the fire down out of heaven and showing the entire nation of Israel that God was God. Four verses later, he's under a tree saying, let me die, let me die, let me die. Huh? What else? What about a great loss? Here we are. Here we are with Mary and Martha. They're not experiencing a a great success, they're experiencing a great loss. Man, Jesus was a regular in their home. He was a regular in their home. And Brother Howard, 
They sent for him, and he didn't come. And at the lowest moment of their life, their friend was not there. Matter of fact, he poured a little salt in the wound. He not only was there when he died, he waited four days till he was good and dead. Now you would about have to think in our middle mind, Mary Martha was saying, if he'll come for anybody, he'll come for us. I mean, that's just my own flesh, brother. That's my own, that's just my own rationale. If he was coming instead in our home and he knew that he was welcome in our home and he frequented our home, you'd have thought that, man, if I sit for him, if he'll come, he'll come for us, surely. But he didn't come. So now they've been cast into despair because their brother is dead. Listen, it's quite obvious as you read the conversation between later in the chapter between the Son of God, Mary and Martha, it's quite obvious that they didn't fully understand the nature of the power of God. Their perception wasn't clear. I read about a man that went to a, how many of you ever remember a full service gas station? Man, I do too. Brother Jack, you remember Bobby Poole had that one right across from the hospital right there. Him and Wendell. And Mama pull up in that, in that, in that little, right there in, the, in that fork of the road. And Mr. Bobby would come walking out there and she'd say, fill it up, please. And he'd fill it up and he'd check the air and the tires, Brother Kobe. And he'd always get that window, windshield wiper. He'd wash the windshield and talk to Mama and ask how Dad was and all that kind of stuff. And this man pulled up in there and the full service was, and he started to clean the windshield. And the man said, hey, there's stuff on the windshield. Could you clean it again? He dipped his, he dipped his little tool back in that water, washed it, scrubbed it again. The man looked at it again and said, hey, there's still something on the windshield. Would you do it again? And he dipped it back in there. And he started to say it the third time. And his wife reached over and got his glasses and cleaned his glasses. Put him back on his head. He said, oh, I'm sorry. It's good. Amen. You know what? That's where we live most of the time. We're trying to tell the Lord it's still got something on the windshield. When it's not the windshield, it's our perception. They couldn't understand what was going on but they, because their perception was wrong. But notice what he did to speak joy into their depression. Notice verse number 20. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. Mary sat still in the house. Can I tell you something? His presence gave him joy. And there's just something about when you get in the presence of the Lord, when you're brokenhearted, he may not fix your problem, but just being near him, just being with him, just experiencing of the presence of the, of the Spirit of God in your prayer time and your Bible reading, when you listen to good music and worship in the Lord, there's just something about the presence of God. It brings joy. His presence brought joy. Look at verse 23. His promise gave him joy. He said, thy brother shall rise again. Now, if he had frequented their home, they knew that what he said was the truth. Now, they didn't understand when he was going to be raised. She says that a little bit later. I know he'll be raised at the final day. She understood that later resurrection. She just didn't understand this present resurrection. Amen. But man, she knew that when the Lord spoke that promise, that it would give them joy. But look at your Bible. Look at verse 25 and verse 26. Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? I, I don't know, but I, I, Brother Howard, I might could put up a pretty good argument that right there is where Martha got saved. I could put, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't burn nobody's house down if they disagreed with that. That might have been a pretty good, pretty good indication. I am, G, I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the Messiah. I am the Son of God. Yes, Martha, do you believe that? 
Yeah, that might have been a pretty good indication where she got in. Amen. Amen. Hey, his power. Listen, Warren Wearsby made this statement. I want to read it to you. Warren Wearsby made this statement. He said to the Christian, life is not merely a physical condition or a social experience. To the Christian, life is a person. And that person is Jesus Christ. Amen. Christianity is not a, a long list of rules. It's not a creed. I tell you what Christianity is. It's sinners who put their faith in their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he translated them from death unto life, uh, uh, from darkness unto life, from guilt to innocence, uh, from shame to forgiveness, to being lost, to being redeemed. That is life as a child of God. Amen. S.D. Gordon tells about an old Welsh preacher that was staying with a family while he was preaching a meeting. It got close to time to go preach, Brother Adam, and the man of the house sent his wife to knock on the door to tell, tell the preacher that it was time to go to church. And Brother Jacob, he said, when that little lady got back there before she could knock on the door, she could hear the old preacher praying. He said, now, Lord, it's time to go to church. But I'm not going if you don't go with me. He said, it's time to preach. But I'm not going if you don't go with me. The little lady, she listened for a minute to what the old preacher was saying. She walked back in there to her husband. She said, he'll be along shortly and the other one's coming too. Amen, friend. She said, he's coming and the other one's coming too. And can I say, child of God, that ought to be the way we start today. Here I come, but the other one's coming too. Because if you've lived very long, you realize you're not getting anywhere in the power of the flesh. But when we rely on the spirit of God that lives inside of us according to Galatians, too. And verse number 20, thank God, his power will get the job done. Amen. He's the only one that can put life in a dead man. He's the only one that can put joy in a depressed man. But he's the only one that can give hope to the doubt man. See, we've gone from the sick to the sisters to the skeptics. See, the Jews doubted his authority. You read those last verses at the end of the chapter. Verse 37 even says, some of them said, could not this man, if he could open the eyes of the blind, couldn't he not help this man? See, what, what happens as a result of the Son of God lived, uh, the Son of God raised and lives from the dead? Many believed. But many didn't. Though some of those Jews went running away to tell the Pharisees what he had done to get him in trouble. You know why? Hey, listen, okay, they were afraid that the miracles, if he did all the miracles, man, they'd all follow him. They'd all believe him. And then they'd be out. See, them Jews doubted his authority. That's the way it is now. See, the Jews were threatened by this miracle. Instead of rejoicing over it, they're more concerned about their own lifestyle and their position in that day being interrupted. Can I tell you something? There's still those that don't want to consider the claims of Christ. They don't want to think about eternal life. They don't want to think about death. It only upsets their way of living. But let me just tell you something. He cannot be ignored. Amen. You are free to decide, but hear me. You aren't free not to decide. Amen. Question is, will you believe or not? Question is, if you have believed, aren't you tired of wearing them grave clothes? I care. Miss Amy's mom, for years, Nanny would sleep, but she, she'd always have her foot outside the cover. Wouldn't she, Grandpa? She couldn't stand being under, the, under all the cover. It felt like it was, you know, holding her. And Amy and I play around every once in a while. I'll get her and I'll hold her. And she can't stand that not to be moved. She gets, she gets violent. She realizes that right there. You, right there, you get a hold of that right there. You like a bull let go. And we'll just, she can't stand being held. But it amazes me how many Christians are content to be bound. 
you put me in a small place, one of my, me and Brother Richard, we were flying home from our first, our first mission trip. We went, you remember here, we left at 3 o'clock in the morning here, and we couldn't get that bus started. You remember that, Brother Sean? You had to come over here with three and a half gallons of ether to get that thing cranked. Been running 30 seconds before, but now it won't run. We got to coming home, and I felt so sorry for this little lady. We were flying coach, and then I probably weighed, that was a long time ago, but I still weighed more than I should, 285, I guess. Brother Richard, 350, I guess. And we were so tired, we got on that, we got on that plane coming home. We were riding in coach. I mean, you can't put a full-grown dog in coach. I mean, man, you're flying coach, and them folks want to lay their seat back. I was like, you want me to brush your teeth? <laughs> I mean, good night, man. I, I mean, I can tie their tie from behind them. It's so small. And me and Brother Richard got on there, man. We were like graveyard dead tired. And this little bitty lady comes sit between me and him. And I thought, I know we had to use her for a pillow from, from Colorado to Fort Worth, Texas. Because we were asleep before we ever pushed back. And I thought, you know she's about to die. Here two grown men laying on top of her. You put me in a closet or a small car. Man, I, I feel like I'm about to come unglued. But spiritually, Brother Lyman, we get to the place where we just all right. To be. We're alive. He's breathed life into us. But we're bound. Amen. It'd be one thing if the Jews were the ones that doubted him. But what about the disciples doubting him? They, the Jews doubted his authority. The disciples doubted his ability. What about it that, that Martha and Mary knew that he could heal the sick and knew that he had raised the dead, but they thought he had to be there to do it. They thought he could do it as long as it just happened. They knew he could do it in the last day. And Thomas said, Lord, if we go down there, they're going to kill us. I mean, you're like, Thomas, do you not realize who you're talking to? This is the one that knows the end from the beginning. Yeah. And if they tried to kill him before and he got away, don't you think? He, but see, they, did, they doubted his ability. I mean, even Mary and Martha showed that they, they, they believed he could, but they just didn't believe he could do it like they needed him to do it. How many times do we find ourselves in that place? We believe he can, he, do, he can do it, but we don't know that he can do it in our situation. But see what we do, we turn around like they did. And you look around and those, he gave life to the dead man. He gave joy to the depressed man. And he gave hope to the doubting man. You know what that is? That's just God. Doing what it does. I told Miss Amy we were talking last night on the way home, or maybe after we got home. And we were talking about a certain situation. And she said, That's just one we can't fix, ain't it? And I said, Yeah. I said, But it don't make me not want to fix it any less. And I have to make that admit, admission that I can't fix it. But I'm glad when there's a God in heaven that when he does, I can just look around and say, that's just God doing what he does. And probably every one of us find ourselves in some situation in our life, a child, a sickness. I think about Miss Pat. I think about Miss Ruth. I think about Brother Ron Adams. I think about Miss Jenny Brady. I think about, I think about, Brother Ernest and Miss Ruby. Think about Bobby Gale Byers. As their pastor, but Roger, I wish I could come into their home and put my hands on them and raise them up in that weak body. But I can't. And there's times that I look at some Christians, Brother Kobe, that all that they've ever done is serve God, and live for the Lord, and gave their life to the Lord. And in my mind, I'm thinking, if God will do that for anybody, he'll do it for them. 
but sometimes he don't. But even in the times that he doesn't, he can still bring joy to the depressed and hope to the doubter. You know why? Because that's just God. Come on, Miss Julian. Come on, Brother Jacob. That's just God doing what he does. If you're lost this morning, I want you to hear me and hear me well. You say, preacher, I, I'm, I'm not real lost. I'm in church. No, you're lost. Lost is lost. Yeah, man. I, just like right. Luke 15, I preached the other day. I don't care if you're lost in the, in the distance or in danger, danger like the sheep, or in the distance like the sun, or the dark like the silver. All three of them lost. And the silver was just as dead as the sheep, and the sun was as dead as the silver. Ain't no degree of deadness, just decay. And you say, preacher, am I dead? If the Holy Ghost has let you in on the fact that you're a sinner, you're dead in trespasses and sin. He brings your conscience alive. You say, what I do? You're going to have to run to the only person that can put life in a dead man. And his name is Jesus. But I've got good news. He came looking to put life in you. That's the whole reason he came. Amen. And maybe there's a situation in your life that you're desperate, you're depressed, you're despair. And let me tell you something. Every one of us, I don't care how good a Christian you are, man, we all, what's, what's got somebody else in despair may not have you, but just hold on. Something will come to your life that will have you in despair for too long. I promise you. And I, I, Brother Jake, I'm not, the, I'm, not, I'm not as far down the road as a lot of men, but I'm further than I used to be. And there's some things that I probably thought in my mind as a young man, thank God I kept a lot of them out of my mouth. But I thought, man, but after a few years of some living, lacing up some life and living it, I realized, hey, every one of us have our struggles. Every one of us. But I got good news. He can bring joy to your despair. He can bring hope to your doubt. And if you're lost, he can bring life to your deadness. Because that's just God doing what he does. You say, preacher, if I'm dead, what do I do? You come. He cares for you. And he's come to you. And he's calling you. And he'll cut you free. If you'll let him. Child of God, some of us ought to come to him and say, Lord... I know at the end it's going to work out, but I'd sure like to be in your presence till it does. I'd like to hear a promise till it does. I need some joy for my despair. We're going to stand. Brother Jacob's going to sing. I wonder, I wonder if you'd come this morning. Lost person, it'd be a good morning to get saved. Middle-aged, young person, you say, preacher, I'm dead. He'll make you alive. He can make you alive when you go home this morning if you'll come. Brother Jacob's going to sing. You mind the Lord. You mind the Lord. Amen. Have thy affections been Are you cut free? To Are you still trying cross? to live in that great close? Is Would you come? Would you come this morning? With God. Would you come ask the Lord to help you? Amen. Count Tis thou all things for, for Jesus, Jesus but, but lost. Is thy heart right with God? Is thy heart right with God? Washed in the crimson flood, cleansed and made whole. Also, run out there and get him a form, if you will. They should be done at Junior Church. We're going to open the door of the church this morning. Miss Emma, Emma needs to join the church, and we've got some others that want to join the church, too. And uh, so we're going to open the door of the church. 
and uh, and I'll meet you down here, and we'll we'll get you voted in the church. We're gonna baptize some tonight, and others will be coming by letter. So Miss 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 Chris is gonna play a verse, and I'll meet you down here. Amen. <laughs> Fell's jealous. He's got lots of hair. Amen. Well, let me, let me, we'll make this. Emmy got, how long, emmy has been, what, about six weeks, seven weeks? Maybe longer than that. January. January. Yeah, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> That's bad. Time gets away, don't it? Well, Miss Emma got saved, and I, we, I have drugged my feet in getting her baptized, but uh, she wants to come. She wants to come as a candidate for baptism. And uh, so we'll we'll vote on we'll just vote on all this. Miss Kristen Carpenter is Miss Courtney's sister. When I got talking about baptizing Emma the other day, she come to me. She said, "Preacher, would you baptize me?" She said, "I've got saved, but I never I never have been baptized. I never followed the Lord at believers' baptism, and I'd like to get saved. I'd like to get baptized and join the church." And her little do- her little girl Cammy's here over in Junior Church, and she's not been saved yet, but asking questions. And we're take her and the old, uh, old timers used to call that taking them kids that haven't been saved under the watch care of the church, amen. And so we, Miss Miss Kristen, be coming as a candidate for baptism, and uh, and she wants to come. Come on down here, Easton, with mom and daddy. Come on, Bob. They're right here by me. He can't see you. Do him. There he comes, Easton. There he comes. Amen. So Miss Kristen will be coming by. Miss Christian will be coming by candidate for baptism or to, to join the church and be baptized as well. And then Brother Kobe and Miss Taylor. Brother Kobe, you want to say a word? Yeah. Let's thank the Lord for letting us come back this way. And uh, my mind's been on Philippians 1. Philippians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ. And that's what we've come back to do, just to be servants. That's all we're here for and just whatever needs to be done, whatever we can do to 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 be a servant to the Lord. That's what we that's what we want to do. And uh, I'm thankful that, like the preacher said this morning, that's just God doing what He does. Amen. That's just God doing what He does. Here you go. I think He done got upset. You hold it. He's a whining. I let him hurt him before I cry. He cries. All right, pleasure. We got two coming by candidates of baptism, and two be coming from letter from Zion. So can I hear your pleasure, brethren? Will we receive them? All in a second. Second. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right. Well, we'll baptize these two ladies tonight, and uh, we're going to come by and give them the right hand of Christian fellowship this morning. So, Miss Chrissy, you'll play some good handshaking music. We'll come and fellowship them in the church. Don't forget, don't forget there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer for next Sunday night's uh, reception to bring something. Please sign up for that. Then be back tonight, 545 for prayer room, 6 o'clock for the evening service. Come fellowship with these folk. We praise the Lord for saving people. Father, the Lord, baptism, and God bring bring Brother Kobe and Miss Taylor back to help us serve the Lord. So you come fellowship with them. Tell them you're glad they're coming in. Amen. 